three o'clock and you're so welcome to today's Rim Junkie show. I have taken a little bit of a break because I did hurt my back and I'm back, I'm revived, I'm refreshed, I'm full of energy. So you're so welcome to today's live Q&A and last time we were here, I can't remember what day that was, some of you asked me, it might have been last Friday, you said, you know what, I'd love to know how to create a mood board. And a mood board is a sensationally useful tool if you're indecisive or if you can't visualize, you just can't see the big picture. I've told you before, I can walk into an empty shell and see it completely transformed and finished. So um, that's my gift. Yours are different. So I'm going to show you how to make a mood board today. Uh, dying to see who's few of you are there. Do say hello to me. Please say hello to me. Um, let's see if there's any comments there. I don't think there are just yet. And of course, if you have any questions, you just ask away to your heart's content. That's what Friday's all about. Uh, although it doesn't feel like Friday, does it? Uh, all day yesterday, I felt yesterday was Monday because of St. Patrick's Day. Uh, and today, it feels more like a Tuesday than a Friday, but I'm very thankful that it is Friday. It's great. Uh, so hello to everybody out there. For new people joining in who might know me, my name is Anne Tooley. I'm an interior designer I'm based up in the northwest of Ireland. And for the last 12 months, I've been here pretty much every day at 3 o'clock um, sharing nuggets of interior design inspiration and home improvement tips. And latterly, in the last couple of weeks, I've been having um, interview scenarios, live interviews with celebrities and experts. And I have lovely surprises for you next week. I'm not going to tell you probably until Sunday or Monday, but I am really, really excited about this coming week. Arlene is saying, hi, hello, I'm glad you're feeling better. I think that's better. Yeah. Uh, Alan saying, good to see you back, Anne. It's good to be back. Debbie Bailey said, I'd like a mood board based on some green and pink frames. Based on some green and pink frames? Okay, I think I know what you mean. I'll get back to that in a minute. Um, Kavina says, hi, Anne, you're looking great. Um, thank you, Kavina. Uh, would love your vision of creating the mood board. Hi, Anne, good to see you back. Ah, listen, it's great, Anne. You're very welcome to the Sharing the Secrets Masterclass. I was so delighted that you've joined up because I know you're going to learn so, so much. It's fantastic. Um, and Kavina is there as well. And um, Arlene is there too. So you're all here with me. Helen Walsh says, you're looking fab as always. Well, I'll be honest, girls, I wasn't feeling fab last week. I, and I'll be totally truthful. A couple of weeks ago, both my husband and my son, Jack, came to me independent of each other, even though I suspect they'd been talking behind my back. And they both said, I think you're doing a bit too much. I think you're going to have to scale back. I think you're on the brink of exhaustion. And of course, Anne always knows better. And I said, not at all, absolutely not at all, can't stop. Well, anyway, lo and behold, um, my back did get terribly sore, just like that. I don't know whether I wrenched it or pulled it, but it was, I was in pain and I had to stop. So that meant this week, there was no live on Tuesday, there was no live on Wednesday, there was no live yesterday. And I needed those three days. And in fact, last Sunday, this scares me, um, I slept really well that night and I got up and had my breakfast and I said, you know, Neil, I'm still a bit tired. I'm going to go back to bed for a little while. Left my phone in the kitchen because he was fixing something on it for me. And I went back and I fell asleep. And I woke up feeling really refreshed, but I hadn't a clue what time it was. It was 3 p.m. in the afternoon. I could not believe it. I came up to the kitchen, looked at the clock and thought, this is not possible. I slept for something like 13 hours. So let me tell you something, nothing to do with mood boards, but if your body is telling you it's sore or it's tired, um, listen to your body. There's no harm in just stopping for a minute and taking a bit of a rest. I feel like a different woman. And next week, we're going to have a fantastic week. I've got brilliant guests and my energy is right back. Normally, I'm quite a high energy pe person, but a few of you, Pamela Cole sent me a little message saying, Aunt, you weren't quite yourself yesterday. This is a few days ago. And she was right. I didn't even notice it. So... There you go. Mind your energy. Please mind your energy. Do something lovely for yourself. And if that's something lovely just means to stop and do nothing, do that. Jane is saying, I hope you're fully okay again. I am. I'm completely pain-free. I'm fine. And I feel good. I have to say, I feel great. Uh, if I could just get my hair cut, you know, it's funny. I had the scissors in my hand earlier today. After I washed my hair, I thought, will I just try? And I put it in my hand and I thought, you know what? No, no. And I think it was Felice who keeps saying to me, 
if you cut your hair. You think it's bad now, you're going to hate it 10 times more when you cut it yourself. Um, Marina is saying, hi, I'm glad you're back. Marina, I think I saw a message coming through from you. I'll have a peek at that later on. Um, Jane, maybe we could meet up, hook up on Monday or Tuesday. That'll be brilliant. Um, Debbie Bailey said, God made your rest. I needed that rest. You're absolutely right. I needed that rest. Ah, Debbie's in frames I bought in a charity shop, pale pink and green. I want wallpaper and paint to bring the colours together. That's actually a lovely, restful, calm scheme. I actually spoke to one of my masterclass girls at the beginning of the week. I think it was on Monday. And um, she is doing her bedroom in lovely, soft blush tones and greens. And it's really calm and restful. <gasps> Jodie Parsons, all the way from Australia. Jodie saying, hi, Anne. Oh, oh, my goodness. She said, hi, Anne, I'm seeing Richard tomorrow. We'll give him a hug for you. Oh, please, oh, please. Give him the biggest, warmest, smothering hug because I miss that boy so much. But I know that he's in very safe hands with Annalise and they're really happy and it's wonderful. Oh, gosh, Jodie, thank you for that. Thank you. Um. Okay, great. Ah, everybody's saying, good to see you back. Okay, I'm not sure. But uh, Linda Wiley or say no to the scissors. But you know something, Linda? I did use the Olaplex today. I used the shampoo, tiny bit like you told me, washed it twice, used the conditioner, left it on for three or four minutes. And then um, I got the oil, a little bit of it, and I just put it on sort of from here to the ends. And okay, my hair might not look fantastic, but it feels fantastic. So that's Linda or from Academy Hair and Beauty here in Letterkenny. And she, you can buy the uh, Olaplex products online from her, General Logica as well, but I love the Olaplex. I think it's amazing. I've only ever had it in the salon before with Linda, um, but now I've put it on myself and it's definitely, definitely has helped my hair. It's not gonna color it, it's not gonna cut it, but it's definitely helping. Okay, mood boards. Has any of you ever made a mood board? You can do a virtual mood board. Oh. Jodie, I keep looking at that message. I'm seeing Richard tomorrow. I've almost got palpitations. My goodness. Lucky, lucky you. Debbie, Debbie is saying it's for my hallway. That's fine. It's a nice, calm, restful scheme for your hallway as well. Um, pink and green are colours of nature, and often the colours that work well in nature will actually transmit and work well inside as well. Debbie's saying no to the haircut. Okay, no, I won't. I did buy the scissors, but I won't use it, I promise. I'll use it for my mood boards instead. Okay, so... Before you even start about thinking about your design or whatever, um, I'll show you what I use. And it's a while since I've made one, to be honest, because I don't really need to make one unless somebody is very, very indecisive. I do prefer to make a, a touchy-feely, hands-on mood board rather than a virtual one because I'm a very tactile person and um, it just, I don't know, I, I love the satisfaction of making it, the physical putting together, the cutting out, the pasting, the sticking. It's a good thing to do. If you're creative or artistic, you'll love it. And if you're indecisive, it really will help you to put your room together on a board without going to the expense of buying the wrong fabrics or the wrong sofa or the wrong paint. Mary McGinnis said, hi, Anne. How are you feeling better? I am feeling much better. Hope I think she said, hope you're feeling better. I took your Panadol night, Mary, on was it Sunday night, whatever night I had the long, long sleep. And honestly, it was amazing. I did sleep. I needed to sleep. And you know what? We all need to mind our energy and mind just rest. I learned a lesson. Your health is your wealth. Rest up. Um, and the world didn't fall down because I wasn't here live Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. Okay, so I use a biggish board, okay? This is the size of the board that I use. It's an A3, one size up from an A4. And I buy them in the stationery shops and it comes in a double size of that or does it come... She might come. I might get four of these. I can't remember. I think I get four of them. It's a, it might be an A1 size board, um, or else you can buy one on an A2 and cut them in half. Um, but that's the size board that I use because I think to have impact, you must have a big size. Okay, and I always use card. Station shops have them because kids are using them for projects and art projects all of the time. And then I want you to start gathering together the pieces. The components and remember back to when i showed you and taught you how to pick paint colors way back maybe a year ago uh, at the start of the facebook lives start with your fabric if you can and this is actually this is a lovely little throwback this is um a mood board that i made for the little girl's room in the shane file and show house in drama hair and Leitrim all those years ago okay and i started with 
the fabrics and the fabrics were i had um okay let me show you i started with the gingham and this voyage fabric here now you can't see it too clearly here because it's only a small little piece but it was a beautiful fabric and had lovely touchy feely details on it there was a little girl with hair that you could play with and you could play with her dress and there were butterflies and flowers and different things and i think there might have been a little sheep as well it was gorgeous so i used that to make the headboard because it was quite an expensive fabric and then for the curtains i used this cheap red and white gingham it was inexpensive i used plenty of it um, i put them on a white painted pole okay um and i took the paint color i think it was a color trend color i think it was it wasn't French white, it was one of the whiter whites. It might have been almost white or something like that. Innocence it might have been. Um, which and Innocence was exactly the same colour as the background colour of that fabric. Okay. Um, I, I did paint furniture, I painted the furniture white and I got pretty little pictures and it was a lovely fresh red and white gingham scheme which worked and I loved it and Shane Filan loved it and everybody loved it because I won that competition. It was great. So get your board. What I like to do is I like to paint the background of the board in the paint color that I'm going to use. So get yourself a tester pot of paint and paint your pink color. If you don't want to do that, this is one thing that you can do. If you're using color trend paint, color trend paint will give you a generous size sample that you can buy in the shops. OK, so depending on what color you want to put in your walls, use that. But because the pink color is such a big component of your room, I do prefer to go to the trouble of painting the board. Now, I, ha I didn't have the floor, the carpet, I had to put a dark carpet on that, on that Shane Filan um, little girl's room. So when you're building up your board, I want you to start with your fabric first. OK, so I used the red and white gingham for the little girl's room. Here's one that I used, it was a family room. And I used these lovely fresh um, Clark and Clark fabrics. Pick them first, OK? So once they were picked, it was very easy to take, get a sofa that was pretty much the same colour as that taupey stripe that's in it. If you can see that, am I pointing to the right one? So sofa, um, for your sofa, what, what you need to do is you're going to gather all these bits and pieces together before you even start to construct your board. So you're going to get your colour scheme together first. Um, and do start with the fabric if you can. It makes life so much easier. And the beauty of most fabric companies will send you out samples. So you will get a physical sample of the fabric, okay? And which then you can layer so that you can see, because you're going to use, I use that um, in Roman blinds and I use the green and the curtains. So when you layer it together, you get an effect of how it's going to look, okay? And then find an image of the sofa that you're going to use and cut it out. And I'll tell you all about the cutting out in a minute. Another thing that I like to do is pick your flooring here. It was Balterio laminate, lovely, deep, warm, cozy laminate floor. So when you're putting your flooring sample down, you build this picture up just like you would in reality. So the floor is on the bottom. Your furniture is sitting on the floor. OK, um, your fireplace is representative of the height that you know a fireplace would be in and you build up your fabrics and you've got your lamps as well and you can clearly see that that's a fresh it was a family room for teenage kids really um and it's lovely and fresh and quite timeless in a contemporary way so going back to the nitty-gritty of how you build it you get your board okay and you if you're serious about making mood boards you'll need to buy your boarding you'll need to buy don't cut the board with scissors you must use a, use a scalpel so i use a scalpel and I use um, a metal ruler, okay? So say for this picture, for the fireplace there, I cut out my picture in the fireplace, I block mounted it on a piece of card, which I cut with nice sharply with the um, scalpel and the metal ruler to keep it straight. Um, just literally butt the metal ruler up here. You've got a, a cutting mat underneath it, so you're protecting the table or the desk that you're working at, and you just, you get used to it, and the, the metal, um, the metal ruler actually helps you and just gives nice clean lines. These I would have cut with the um, cut with the scalpel as well for sharp lines. Anything straight, same with the floor, cut with a scalpel. Now, furniture and the lamps, because they're fiddly and sometimes if you're cutting out a chair and the legs are spindly, I, do, I use nail scissors, quite sharp nail scissors, that I only keep for um, my mood boards. And for my fabric samples, I usually use pinking shears to cut them. Um, because then they don't fray so much. 
and obviously this, this, the light is at ceiling height, you know. So you're building up, but you can see, a child can see what that room is going to look like, and you know whether you're going to like it or not before you spend any money at all. Let me see if there's any questions, um, and I hope I'm making sense. No questions, no. Okay. Um, and what I use to attach the um, the pieces or the components of the room, I use two things. I use double mounted tape, which I would that's what I would usually use. It obviously didn't use enough because there's a flap coming up there. Um, double sided tape to put on my fabrics because the fabric is a little bit heavier. And I use spray mount. You know the spray mount that you get in the artists or the stationery shops in a blue tin, and just a little bit, a little bit of it. You spray the you know say well, i want to put the sofa down on top i put the flooring down so then i want to put the sofa down spray the back of the sofa leave it for a little minute to cure then put it down and if you need to adjust it or move it you know you can lift it off or use the tweezers to lift it off it's great stuff it's fantastic and it lasts for ages and ages and ages um but start with your fabric if you can going back to debbie and the pink she's got the color scheme of the pink and the green so maybe find a fabric if you wanted to put a blind or a curtain in your window that has a bit of the, those lovely florals um or watercolor uh, voyage maison have some beautiful fabrics that would have all those pale pinks and greens and then you could take a tone of um pink or blush out for the walls or even pale green greens are very restful and calming i had adele roach the color consultant and color psychologist on here last week and we talked about the impact that colors have on you and um, the lovely soft blush pinks are lovely and gentle color trend have a beautiful one i can't just remember unveiled i think it's called it's beautiful um and there are lots of lovely soft greens okay Okay, now here's a different kind of a mood board. This was actually where I had to design an apartment, um, an open plan apartment, which was difficult because it was actually, believe it or not, in the centre of it was this bathroom, which had the privacy glass. So it was literally like a pod in the centre and everything came off from it uh, and it worked really, really well. But you can see that the colour scheme is modern it's contemporary it's a masculine feel to it but again starting with the floor then adding the sofa uh, the artwork the fabrics that i was going to use there's a vertical radiator so obviously i would hang it the way it would be in the room and the coffee table and some ornaments on the floor um, again the bedroom bed the floor put, put down the floor first then i'd probably put in the, the built-in wardrobes and then i would have added the bed um and the that's a shower enclosure so you can see throughout the entire apartment there's a color scheme going on it is masculine it is strong um with a contemporary kitchen to, again timber on the floor with a white matte kitchen um and lots of glass and lots of stainless steel definitely quite masculine but i loved it i absolutely loved it but again, you can see immediately what that entire apartment is going to look like. So say you're thinking you've bought a new apartment or you've bought a new house and you're just nervous and you don't know and you want to have flow. You've heard Anne talking about flow and the importance of flow. Um, so things like having your same flooring running throughout and having toning colour schemes running throughout, having compatibility between the rooms all creates a sense of flow, which is all very, very valuable. Here is another... Um, Oh, actually, I've got a name on that, so I want to not, I want to cover that name, okay. So this was actually for a client that was quite indecisive, um, and these are gorgeous, gorgeous cush, curtains in a lovely silk damask. They were beautiful, um, and it was quite an opulent room with lots of velvet and warm textures and tones and the accents, plenty of art, panelling as well, and a lovely timber floor. I think the timber floor was from, it was from the hard food company in dublin i think it was called provence and it was just stunning absolutely stunning it was semi-solid floor and that is actually the color of it it was lovely and soft and subtle but again you know um, quite an elegant room more a much more formal style but again by having the velvets there you can touch them you can feel them so if you're tactile you'll know if you like them or not um okay <laughs> Maura Dixon. Hi, Anne. Um, and I'm not sure if, if it's Maura or Moira, 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 Maya. In Donegal, we call you Maya for that spelling. We call you Maura as well. Hi, Anne. Great to see you looking so well again. One question. Would the direction of the room really influence colour choices? 
absolutely yes absolutely yes um who was i speaking to recently that put i think it was a, it was a girl from um Gronia from my master class and she her room was east facing and the color that she put in just looks so cold because it was the wrong color she's now going to put in the soft blush pink from color trend which is going to be perfect my if you don't believe me have a look at my 50 shades of gray video you'll find it here on the page watch it um, i've had so many people calling me in distress because they'll say i was over with maya dixon and she had this fabulous color on her um on her hall so i thought you know what i'm going to go home and paint it that color myself okay um and I paint it and it looks nothing like yours. Mine is now looking lilac or blue or green, even though it's the same paint color that you used because your room was south facing and mine was north facing and it has a massive impact on. Maybe it's time to do a refresher of that, to be honest, but have a look at that video. It does affect you, uh, particularly for north facing. With south facing, you can have anything you want really, but if it's north facing and sometimes if it's east facing as well, um, you need to be careful. Some colors can appear much, much cooler than you might have intended. Jennifer Egan says, hi, happy Friday. I know, isn't it fantastic? It doesn't feel like a Friday, but it's great. We know it is. Um, so yeah, Maya, we can chat about that again over in the other group if you like, but definitely the aspect has a phenomenal impact on your color choice, phenomenal. So before you pick a pink color at all, get out your phone and download a compass app if you don't have one and see exactly where um what aspect whether it's north south east or west and you know where you get the sunshine really really important today's a beautiful day here um and we can't get enough sunshine and sunlight and i do encourage you to create really warm color schemes in the sense that keep your walls neutral yes absolutely but keep them warm and then take in tons of color in your accents um here's a, here's an over the top totally over the top um dramatic bedroom okay so for here what i did was i actually got the wallpaper i don't know if you can see it or not so textured wallpaper with sort of a uh, a diamond pattern on it and i just pasted that onto the board again start with the bed layered up the bed and the canopy um but again this is this was to indicate dramatic styles so of dramatic fireplace dramatic um lighting dramatic chairs lots of opulent fabrics um fur and um there's a, a damask there as well velvets um totally ott but that's what i had to do for, for that day um uh, here is another board that i did for an open plan interior just so that you can see very vast spaces very high ceilings um and what i did here was create different in a big space sometimes it's good to create um to set sort of make a sectional of your space and have different seating areas within the one space or have a seating area and a dining area or maybe a more formal seating area and a more relaxed TV space if it's a very big open plan space. Uh, there are huge ceilings there too, lovely light. So the blinds are just simple voil blinds, Roman blinds in voil because Oftentimes in a high rise building, if you're living in an apartment or a flat and your bedroom could be looking into somebody else's bedroom. So this is something I've often done is where I've either put a voil curtain at the window or I've made a voil in um, a nice textured voil in a Roman blind. Uh, and you can put a curtain over that if you like, but it does give you a lot of privacy, a lot, a lot of privacy. Okay. I just keep an eye. Um, questions don't be shy ask away ask away actually i found one there that brought me back where did i put it here this was actually um my drawing of our old kitchen i had a very strong vision for what i wanted that's from 20 years ago believe it or not that is from 20 years ago and i knew my kitchen the kitchen my dream kitchen that i wanted was um a clive christian type kitchen cream um in framed you know with the pillars and the coving on top the over mantle the black aga um and i drew it out and, and 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 did it on a board so then i could bring that with me wherever i was going when i was looking for floors when i was looking for tiles whatever um it was just handy for me to do and have gas thing is now my dream kitchen is going to be uber contemporary Pulls apart 
absolutely pulls apart um you know and i haven't thought too much about it because covid has sort of stopped our plans of building again for a while um but my new kitchen will most definitely be contemporary heaven absolutely contemporary heaven with an enormous island uh, a very sociable island for when we can all gather and congregate and have parties and have coffee mornings and have all of our friends and family around us again Oh, Jodie, if you're still here, please do give Richard Tui a big hug from his mother because I'm so jealous of you. I'm so jealous, but I'm delighted that he's getting to see you tomorrow. Rhonda is saying, I have an open tread mahogany staircase. I was thinking of painting it to lighten things up. Any suggestions of colours and product to use? Okay, being brutally honest, I think you might regret it if you paint it. Um, maybe send me a photograph, Rhonda. Um, Mahogany has such a luster to it. I know it's dark, but maybe if you change everything else and keep this stark, I mean, you can paint it, but if you paint a satin wood or a glass paint on top of your treads, with all the wear and tear of walking, that paint is going to wear off over time and it's going to have to be touched up. Do send me a photograph. My gut feeling is you probably are better off to leave it. Um, now, you, what you could do if you wanted to lighten it up a little bit have your treads um in mahogany if you've got spindles paint your spindles in a white or a cream or a light gray and with the mahogany probably white would be the best to be perfectly honest and keep your handrail in your mahogany and then you, you you lighten it up a little bit i can remember once going into a house in kitty Beggs a long long time ago they had the most magnificent gone with the wind staircase all in mahogany but it was too much it was too oppressive and in fact if rosie mccahey's watching she knows what i'm talking about because we did that in her house as well all we did was paint the spindles changed everything absolutely everything um Okay, here is another, um, this is, and your versatility is amazing. I'm still finding the masterclass fascinating. How long do you think trends seem to last? I've inherited G-Plan bedroom furniture from 1960. Let me see, my light is going, I forgot to put on my lights, that's why. Okay, I'm, I've inherited G-Plan bedroom furniture from 1969, not keen on it, but it seems to be coming fashionable again. It's becoming extremely fashionable again. And that G-Plan furniture can look amazing in a more contemporary interior. So maybe when you move, Kavina, you'll find just the spot for it. So I would not be, that's the antiques of now really, um, or certainly the antiques of tomorrow. And I bet your kids would probably love to have it when they have their own homes. So hang on to it. Um, I'm delighted that you're loving the masterclass. Listen, I, most of you are, everybody that I've spoken to, it's my pride and joy, it's my fourth child. And one thing I will say to you, because I took this week off, I never actually got the masterclass up on the learning platform. It's, well, it is actually there, but it hasn't, I haven't formally done it. So if anybody does want to join the masterclass, send me a note and I'll send you the details because that special offer of 147 euro still stands. I said until I, t until I put it up on Thinkific, that's the way it's going to be. And it's not officially up there yet um, because I haven't given anybody the Thinkific links for it. Uh, I will share them here. So if you want it, it's 147 euro. There are two payment plans, so it makes it very easy and affordable and it's definitely worthwhile doing. Um, and as I upgrade it, everybody who joins now, my precious founding members will always be on automatically upgraded to the next level because I do intend to increase the content a lot more uh, i want to improve it i want to keep improving it i really do want this to be a world-class master class and you know what susie o'neill from au makeup who's going to come on here as my guest this she sends in every piece of makeup that you get from her it says believe you can and you're halfway there theater result um, so i do believe that i can do this with the online master class i really do um, so if you want to get in get in now but you'll get in at the founding members um, special price um, you'll learn a lot about yourself as well you'll learn a lot about your style and even things like you know knowing instinctively how to get your colors together um, it's sort of, I, I do it in a building brick sort of a way, so I do recommend that you do the modules in the order that I give them, and then you can dip in and dip out to have that information forever and ever. And there's always this actually um, a sister private Facebook sharing the secrets masterclass group as well, where I'm always available all of the time. Um, Margaret Tool said, I have a pine of stairs. Any ideas for upgrading? Okay. Okay, pine is different. Yes, I would definitely recommend that you do something with your pine. Um, 
what I like to do with pine is I like to um, paint the steps, paint the risers and paint the spindles in white or a light gray or an off white, whatever your thing is. Um, you have to prime it with a bin primer. That's really, really important. The shellac primer goes on first, a couple of coats. Um, then you paint it. Uh, I like to put a runner up the stairs because a runner is so compatible with um, a painted stairs. So riser, steps, spindles, painted white. The handrail then, I would go to the trouble of sanding that down, taking off the varnish that's on it, and then either using a wood stain and um, a varnish on top of that, or there's a few, some of them that you can actually mix the, um, oh, I can't think of the name of it. Um, oh dear, it's an American product. But your paint shop will advise you so that you can either get a colored varnish, or what I like to do is to stain the wood and then put on the varnish or something locked. I can't remember if anybody from Foy's is watching, will you let me know what it is? Um, because I was talking to Adele about it the other day but it will transform it. And the darker handrail is gorgeous. You can paint your handrail, but just a bit like painting the mahogany before, with constant use, it will come, the paint will come off it. So I think you're better off darkening that handrail and totally getting rid of your pine. And you'll have a brand new stairs, Margaret, well worth the effort. Um, okay, so this is another um, contemporary board. Um, Okay, um, again, a strong, quite a strong um, feel to it. Lovely autumnal colours. So again, I started with the colours, started with the cushions and the fabrics and the um, scatter cushions and the curtains. Then we added in, it was Laura Ashley sofa, um, was added in. So this is a mirror image. So when I look at this side, I think it's this side. Um, but you can see that pile on the cushions the style of the lamp and the style of the artwork. So it's an autumnal, lovely room for a fire, okay? Um, and again, you know, you get you get to see what the room looks like. And one of the girls, Ashton Noble, who's here, who's just joined the master class as well, she's just built the most amazing house down in Wicklow. And um, she was here for all of the first lockdown and we, she learned loads and it was great. And her house is turned, it's just stunningly amazing. But she said that she made mood boards and she took the mood boards with her then when she was going to the flooring shop, when she was going to the fabric shop, when she was going to the paint shop, when she was going everywhere. And immediately the guys in the shop had this vision and they shared the vision for what they need. Because I find sometimes if I'm with a client, I know exactly what that house is like. I know exactly what the style is. But the person in the shop might not. And they're giving their interpretation and advice based on what they think it's going to be. Whereas if you have this with you, there's no thinking. It's there in black and white and it's just so visual and so easy to use and to inspire. Anne Fortune is saying, Helen Cartwright, oh Anne, I actually shared a photograph of that stunning light of yours today on my Instagram story because if there was ever a light that was in perfect proportion to the room. That was it. It was just unbelievable. It was such a big light, but you had the scale for it. And it was just a perfect example of getting balance right. Um, Trish Collins is saying, hi, Anne, hope you're feeling better. I am feeling much better. Honestly, we underestimate the power of rest. Rest and water and sleep, honestly. But thank you. I do appreciate all your kind wishes. I really, really do. Um, here is another uh, bit over the top. This was deliberately, I had to do this. I think this was for my, uh, when I used to do the Sharing Secret Masterclass when I used to go around the country with it. And now I'm doing it online. But um, this was a country scheme, you know, with uh, lots of Laura Ashley fabrics. There was checks uh, in the blues, and the whites, and the, the reds. There was a toile de jus as well. Um, big angle nook fireplace, you know, roughly hewn oak planks on the floor, rough wall finishes. Um, dresser very country not for everybody but if country is your thing that's what your thing is uh, this was an example of a global room a global uh, globally inspired room because as people travel they do bring um, their artifacts back and I have never designed a full room with a full global theme I might have used some you know Chinese prints or Moroccan blankets or um, pottery or whatever but this room has an Asian influence and it was, um, again, you know, put together with 
in the middle, the, the far east as the inspiration um, and uh, in the furniture and then the colours as well were muted colours which worked really really well with that sort of a Japanese zen like kind of space nice and calm. Um, Kavina is saying sleep is the best medicine was told as a child and it's so true it is true and you know what I think during this lockdown a lot of people are having trouble with sleep because do you remember I had Helena Tuberty the fertility expert and amazing lady she's a hypnotherapist as well and she does amazing work with um, girls who've got women have got endometriosis or having difficulty conceiving and she's just incredible but she did talk a lot about sleep and how we need to balance that circadian rhythm and do you know something i talked about it this a couple of days ago she told us when you get up in the morning to open your window i always do that but she said open the big window out so that you're connecting with nature the light is not reflected ref how do i say the sunshine is not being refracted if you have it coming through the glass sorry it is refracted if it's coming through the glass so it's not hitting the back of your eye your retina i've been doing this every single morning i do it and i stay there for a good few minutes and literally just let the back of my eye absorb the light and the sun and it's not always sunny up here in donegal but i've been doing it and i do think it has helped my sl my sleep she says it balances your circadian rhythm and that your brain actually tells you 12 hours later or eight hours later i can't remember which it is that um it's time to go to sleep and, and some of the girls have been doing this here and i know it has worked anything that helena toberty says is grounded in science anyway her back, she's a nurse and a midwife her background is on, is in science she is incredibly intelligent she's just so kind and amazing um so if you want to learn more about sleep go back and find helena toberty's video the interview that i did with her a couple of weeks ago now but it's here um, and latif great session now lovely to have visual ads of course it is because it's tactile one more and this was i love black and white bathrooms we had one two three black and white bathrooms totally different in our old house um and again here i used i actually layered the fabric sample up in a roman blind um, i do that and you know what if i was doing um, a mood board with a curtain i would actually take the curtain fabric and i pleat it as as you would in a curtain so that you can see how it drapes and how it flows but just getting your colors together um and seeing them like that you will know and i would hope that you'd fall in love with it because you you know you pick what you want so remember that any if you go online clark and clark definitely do it voyage do it um but i would imagine that all of the fabric houses if you go online and you see something a fabric collection that you like send them an email and they will send you your fabric swatches and it's a great place to start and for the flooring you can either sometimes the um flooring shops will give you a little sample or a little off cut or you can just go through the magazines and find the same color of flooring that you want or even go online and i've often done that and print go into the um go into floor it or carpet interiors or the harbor flooring company or wherever see the flooring that you like and you know print them off Anne Ward, hi Anne, glad to see you back to your gorgeous self again. Haha, <laughs> don't know about that. Um, just missed most of your chat. We'll catch up later. Have a lovely weekend. Listen, yeah, I know. I'm, I'm looking forward to the weekend. Um, although I suspect we're, I'm going to be busy just getting the things that I hadn't done with the masterclass um, and getting it up on the Think of It platform. I have to do something with the um, the web name. I think it's, um, I don't know, I need to do something. I need to talk to Register 365 about that. But it's really exciting. It's, it's actually fantastic. Um, and and I've got a fantastic lineup for next week. I have three amazing, amazing guests. Um, oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. And I will tell you, once I get that all posted up, I will tell you all about that um so yeah it's going to be very very interesting um i spoke at length actually to wednesday's guest today she's a household name she's somebody you know her business is in a business you know and a very interesting story and how she has pivoted that business through lockdown but this girl is a superstar i think no matter what she turned her hand to she probably would be just amazing at it that's just the way she is um so yeah lots of lovely stuff coming up next week and indeed in the other weeks of some big name people coming it's amazing um i'm just so blessed and honored that some of these people have said yes i will do it some of them can't do it until later on but that's fine um yeah it's pretty pretty amazing okay well i've gone way past half three but who cares it's friday um if you've any any questions at all just you know 
maybe better to ask me here on a Friday because you know I'm not going to say send me a question and a message because I might not see it I just might not see it but Rhonda do send me a picture of your open mahogany stairs if you like um, I would like to have a look at that and I will just send you a quick little message back and if anybody wants any information about joining the masterclass at the reduced rate you know um, send me a message or if you have a friend or a family member that you think god they would enjoy that or they could really learn from that or they're going to be building or they're going to be renovating or they just have an interest let them know because it won't ever be at this price again um and things happen for a reason if i hadn't hurt my back it would be all up on the web page now and yeah, things happen for a reason but i can tell you my energy is back i feel great i really do <laughs> might look fantastic definitely need a haircut um but silly me silly me uh we keep smiling and I won't be back on Monday. I will take Monday off, uh, but I'll be back on Tuesday live with a guest, Wednesday live with a guest, Thursday live with a guest, and Friday back again with a live Q&A. And you know what? I might just pick a little topic as well, a random topic, just like we did today. So do start. Go to your... The, the stationery shops are still open, I think. Um, so uh, get some boards. Get some fabric. Get ordering some fabric. Get go looking through the magazines and start putting it together. And the more you do do it, the more you'll enjoy it and the better you'll get. But do invest. If you're going to do it, do buy the green cutting mat. Um, it's it's bigger size. It's bigger than that. So, you know, it, it's perfect to protect your table. Do buy a scalpel and some blades. And it's very easy to use. Do buy a metal ruler because then you get the nice straight edges and get a little pair of neat little... Um, nail scissors just for cutting the fiddly bits because it's the best way to do it and get a can of that mount spray mount and get a roll of double-sided tape and that's all you need all you need Ashton is saying hi Anne would you put a dark wood herringbone in a hallway if it, putting it on open plan kitchen living room too okay um is it going to be herringbone everywhere or can is it one of the boards that you can have running as a board say in your open plan kitchen living room and you can have it in your um you know you can have a herringbone in one and running in the other as normal but i would have no problem as long as it's a, as long as it's a uniform space herringbone works better in a rectangular space or a square space no doubt about that um you know it kind of lo gets lost a little bit when it goes into a very narrow space but if it's a decent space i would have no worries with going ahead and doing that when we had our old house in fox Rock in dublin we um our hall was the original herringbone hall and it was stunning absolutely beautiful absolutely beautiful and people are worried about herringbone and saying oh there's so much of it around at the moment so much herringbone so much chevron uh is it going to go out of fashion i don't think so i really don't think so and if you really love something and herringbone is a classic anyway uh okay there's a revival at the moment but it's something that's beautiful and something that's beautiful is always going to be in style and in vogue so i would have no worries about doing it in both absolutely none at all Mary T. Do you ever say Susan Faulkner? Faulkner. Hi, Susan. Okay. Right. On that note, I will go. I'll post the agenda. Um, hopefully, I'll get next week's agenda up to you on Sunday. Um, I just need to confirm with everybody and just get the streaming links up, and then we can, I can post it. But I'm dying to let you know who's coming. Okay? So have a lovely weekend, and do try to rest like I did. If you're feeling tired at all, if you're feeling... And I was feeling down. On Mother's Day, I, I did not enjoy Mother's Day. I missed my two away boys desperately. I really did. Cried and cried and cried. Uh, you know, and even though I know they're both healthy, well, safe, madly in love with two of them, um, you know, I just, it just hit me in a wave. Um, and that started things off. And then tiredness set in. And then my back I twisted my back. And you know what? I think it was a good thing because it just made me stop and um, take it easy. And I'm feeling great again. So I do have a gorgeous weekend. Uh, do something really nice for yourself. Get out in nature as much as you can. And stay safe. Stay fabulous. And I'll see you again on Tuesday at 3 o'clock with a really special guest.